Hi, welcome to Art by Anna Marie. I'm Anna Marie and today I'm going to show you how to paint a watercolour dog. In this case the dog's called Scooter. I'm going to show you some of the different ways to hold your paintbrush and also to apply layers so that your dog really stands out. This is something that you can uh, watch along to but you can also pause and paint along with me. So first of all, I use the palette to really separate the different tones in the painting. So after I've drawn it, I've decided on three tones of brown. So even though you might think, oh, it's a brown dog or it's a light brown dog, you still need to go with what's going to be three different tones. I think it's just a really good, easy rule to have. And if you're not sure what those three colors of brown are gonna be, just get your the brown that you can see and put a little bit of white with it to lighten it and put a little bit of blue or even gray with it to darken it a bit if you can't 100% tell. Each time you're adding a little bit of brown to the page, you can see that I'm not actually painting my paint on with the paintbrush um, as though I was painting a wall or something like that. I'm really, I've got the paintbrush on the side and the aim with the paintbrush at this point is to get some color onto the paper. So I'm dabbing, I'm also going sideways in with the brush, I'm putting a dab here and a dab there and then going back to my picture and seeing exactly where I want the color. And I'm applying the first layer wet so that I can really see um, if I can blend in any of the other brown colors. The first layer of paint goes on the nose and I'm not 100% worried about the tonal qualities of the nose yet because uh, what I've learned about dogs' noses is they take several layers so that they don't end up looking like cartoon noses um, and you kind of have to get out of your mind that it's a nose at all. In Scooter's case, he has um, quite dark um, features around his mouth and around his eyes. So I was careful to keep every time you apply a layer to one section, if you know that the, a different part of the painting is the same type of darkness, then you want to make sure that you keep your layers quite even. Here again I've got the paintbrush and I'm holding it sideways and I am literally just dabbing on the colour and then I might take a little bit of extra colour and I might pull it down or push it up. This is the first layer so there's not an incredible amount that can go wrong here because you're really just looking at your different tones and thinking about how you can uh, layer those tones. The one thing you really got to be careful about, especially with a dog like Scooter, is that you don't overwork the light sections. And the, the kind of problem I have sometimes is I start with the light sections and I think, oh, I'm just going to put a little bit of color here. But in actual fact, you want to start with your mid sections and then you can continue to build up your darker sections on top of the mid sections. And I find that works a lot better and just completely ignore your your light sections because I've said before once you put some color onto the white paper you can never get your white paper back so in this case I'm just going to concentrate on the mid color range. You can see here that I've inserted a picture of Scooter so you can see what I'm actually working from and every time I kind of look away I'm looking back at the picture just to see the tones and the shading and I think what my eye is doing is it's breaking down not the top layer that you can see in the photo but it's actually looking and thinking how would I build up that layer so you kind of it's it's almost like um, dissecting the photo as though you put a filter over it because uh, what some inexperienced painters do is they go straight for the things that stand out and they paint that big 
dark eye to begin with but actually what you want to do is just I always use gray for black at the beginning and you just want to be building up constantly building up and it does take several hours and it sometimes it takes several days because um, depending on how um, what kind of weather you're having how quickly the paint dries it really does affect the next layer but you can see there with Scooter and um, I've gone in quite confidently now with the ear and um, made it quite darker because I'm pretty confident that there's no white sections left in that and any extra um, lightness that I need to add um, I've showed you guys before but I've got a pen that I can add some white details with but in this case I'm pretty confident um, that that's the right color choice for that and I'm just going in very tentatively to um, start layering this eye that really helps when you're painting animals and people is to really understand what the bone structure underneath the fur is doing so in this case there is a snout or the um, the part where the nose is and the mouth is so that's always going to be shaded and in Scooter's case it's also a different color so you really want to be looking at that and thinking okay that can't be a flat thing what's the anatomy of that dog doing underneath the surface what's making it look like that and that helps you form different shadow lines make sure that I change over to a much finer paintbrush when I do some of the details around the eye. I can still spread some water with my finer paintbrushes but I just prefer the extra control. And so I have started the eye and really the key that I found to be able to do these eyes so well is to 100% not think that they are eyes. You're really just looking at the pattern and the curvature and starting again with a gray color and building up a few layers and letting it dry in between. And um, remember that you have to build up the layers, don't go in with the darkest layer first. And over time, you will get something that looks like an eye.
Lastly, you want to decide how many layers to apply on things that aren't the dog. So for instance, the background, or in this case, the little um, bandana that Scooter's wearing. And what I wanted to do was only apply, apply a couple of layers because I really wanted the eyes to stand out in this picture. So you can see the eyes have quite a lot of detail. And then I'm going to leave the bandana and the rest of the kind of neck area of the dog just to be um, one or two washes. And that's going to really make the the dog, the eyes pop out and um, and look quite effective. I'm holding my paintbrush sideways sometimes again and I'm dabbing but in the case of this bandana I need some definite uh, diagonal lines that look like lines so I'm holding the paintbrush a little bit more diagonally with a bit more purpose um, and that just shows you the way you hold your paintbrush is going to affect the way the lines are applied on the page. There is the finished product of Scooter. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it looks pretty spectacular of course but I would say that because I painted it. Um, if you have liked this video and there is a question you have about watercolors or there's something else you want to see demonstrated or you need me to pull it apart a little bit more because you're following along at home leave me a comment below and um, as always please click the subscribe button and give me a like and thank you so much for watching. Bye!